Welcome to the Enlightened Misfits Podcast, the space for entrepreneurs on a quest for unwavering certainty and purpose. I'm your host, Lauren, and each episode is a compass guiding you through authentic conversations, unraveling the mysteries of your human design chart, and offering tools from the remarkable guests. Join me as we embark on a journey to manifest greatness and create a life aligned with our deepest purpose. This is a space where misfits find their enlightenment. Welcome to the Enlightened Misfits Podcast. Welcome back to the Enlightened Misfits Podcast. You have your host, Lauren. In today's episode, I have an amazing guest here with with me. This is Madison. She is a visionary artist. So Madison, tell us a little bit about um, why you call yourself a visionary artist, kind of where this started, where kind of a little bit about your journey. Yeah, absolutely. So, so happy to be here on the show today. Um, This is my first podcast interview, so I am a little nervous, but um, when I heard Enlightened Misfit, I feel like I highly aligned with that, and um, I just think it's hard to talk about yourself and I'm out of my comfort zone, but I'm just here to show some light and love and help other entrepreneurs. Um, I've been an artist all my life. And I think in the past, like three years, I've started taking um, my work a little bit more seriously and really just bringing um, my ideas to life. Um, I'm a photographer as well. So I love to do, maternity photo shoots and mother blessing ceremonies um, that help facilitate um, divine love and help like mothers release their fears in um, like a very spiritual way. Um, I also um, create art installations. Um, My most recent project I did um, was a terrifying tea party and really just creating a safe space for other people I'm also a um, mental health advocate so super passionate about suicide prevention and helping other people um not restart but realign with the life that they could have rather than just accepting the life that we have but yeah um yeah that's me thank you Oh, you're welcome. I was going to say, I have to say, I'm super proud of you for doing this, getting out of your comfort zone. Because if I say so myself, um, speaking, public speaking, I've always had, you know, for me personally, it was very hard. And of course, you know, I've always wanted my own podcast and, you know, I have it now. And it, I'm telling you, I still get nervous, be, even interviewing people or even talking about myself. It's like when people ask me about myself, I'm like, wait, what? you know, so I, I can totally align with what I I'm so I, I, I hear, I feel you. I hear you. Like I, I'm very proud of you though. Cause I mean, it gets easier and hopefully by our listeners that are listening today, um, that they, you know, that will give them the encouragement that you just said, you know, this is your first podcast. And it's just like, if you can do it, I can do it. That's just showing other people that everybody else can do it. Right. So. Yes, absolutely. I, I'm super passionate about, um, women's empowerment and, yeah love to be like a TED talk speaker one day. So hopefully this is like a little milestone for me. <laughs> oh yeah. I, that was um, the little backstory about me. So I did my first speaking engagement. What was it? Probably in August. Um, and I have to say it was this TED tile, um, TED tile speech. And what I'm telling you, I had all the nerves that I was the first, I was the first time I've ever gone on stage in front of people. You know, I'm super passionate about human design and, you know, I've been doing this for like four years, but there's just something about getting on the stage and speaking. It's like, you got to like shed that ego part of like, what are people going to think of me? And then let your heart speak, you know, like let your heart speak. And a lot of people, like even some of my clients were like, I can't believe that you were nervous. I'm like, what is wrong with you? What do you mean? I'm a human. Right. I'm nervous. Right. And it's funny. Some of the listeners are gonna be like, oh my goodness. It, it actually, you know, I, I'm just, I, so here on our podcast, it's more like 
that I always wanted to have those um, authentic conversations. And it's like, nobody really talks about the fear and what you go through. And it's like, you see these, um, you know, famous people that make everything look so easy. Like I watch TED Talks all the time, but you have to remember those TED Talks are edited, right? You know, so it's like, if you were there live, they might not have sounded like that. And I just, um, one of my really good friends is actually a TED Talk. Um, she's a TEDx speaker. And awesome. just watching her and the way that she, she like kills it. But she, before she gets on stage, she doesn't sound like she's going to, like, she's going to, like, she's like, I'm so nervous. Like, it's just, I feel like anybody that you talk to that's human, unless they're like a robot, they're going to tell you the same thing. So it's like, you're not going to ever get rid of those fears. And that's, you know, or I should say those nerves, because um, just from my perspective, they don't ever go away. And that keeps you humble. I feel like for me, that's just, it kept me humble of like, oh my goodness, I'm human. Right. And then it's like, when you get up on stage and you're speaking from your heart, like I could feel when you were talking about yourself, that that mm -hmm. was very genuine. It was like from your heart. So I love that. Yeah. Um, so hopefully that will give some of, you know, the listeners that courage to just, uh, be that, you know, I can see you say that if you want to be a TEDx speaker one day, you will be a TEDx speaker yeah. one day. I'm super excited for you. You make sure you send me your TEDx talk when you, when you get on stage. <laughs> oh, <I'm> <laughs> okay. So the one thing that I um, am really super interested about is when you said the, when you said the concept of the virtual book club that you offer, mm -hmm. tell some of our um, listeners what that is and how they, for one, could connect with you if they're really into reading books and um, what this looks like, like, like what this entails. Yeah, absolutely. So um, the past couple of years, I've been like super isolated from the world, I'd say until like up until last year. So I realized I didn't have like the friend group I needed. And I was like, if I want to do these things and have these discussions, I'm going to have to create that. So um, I'm in a Facebook group. It's called the LS Dreamers. It's a DJ that I really love, but I am super passionate about like deep diving into the secrets of the universe and just like wanting to have those talks that really help us evolve and um I just started a, I was like if anyone wants to come hop on this zoom meeting and just like see where it goes and like I know I do my best work under pressure so it'll literally it'll literally be like an hour before the book club starts and I'll just like wing all this like stream of consciousness stream of consciousness that we just discuss topics from spirituality to our goals and what kind of things we'd like to accomplish and having that sense of community has been really um beneficial for me and just being able to um speak from the heart and have a safe space for other people to um be vulnerable i think that's um why it's so important to me yeah so the two things I love is when you said the secrets of the universe um that's like my whole vibe that's my whole like niche in my business pretty much <laughs> yeah. so that's, I was like we definitely are soul sisters I'm like and you have to add <laughs> that so I'll make sure and then anybody listening to if they want to be added to that I feel like when you said community that is mm -hmm. something that has been coming up a lot for me too because mm -hmm. of like the pandemic has separated us so much okay. and then sometimes you know I don't know if you can resonate with this the online space is just so noisy mm -hmm. that it's just like so many people are doing so many different things and you just kind of you don't really know um like what is for you and what's not anymore and two you know like the online space is very like masculine you know so it's yeah. not so feminine and I feel like a lot of us um leaders healers you know mentors are trying to bring back into that feminine like feminine energy so I love that so yeah, yeah I love that that you said all of that because um I want to be signed up so you can sign me up <laughs> <laughs> awesome <laughs> and the best part of it is I I have a lot of different prompts that are questions and um just things that you might have not have thought about and I think that getting to know yourself and just like having those questions to make you really think about your evolution and what 
we are here to do on earth is just important to me. And I wish like I would have had that kind of support when I was going through different things. So being able to give back to people and just offer a space for people to grow. Um, it's what I'm passionate about. <laughs> yes. I love that. Yeah. I don't know if you're too familiar with human design, but that is kind of where I started with human design. Cause I noticed a lot of people would, I would hear a lot of people say like, I want to know my life purpose. And I'm mm. like, yeah, that's pretty interesting. Me too. Like, so then, you know, this like four years ago, I'm like, How, where do I find my life purpose? You know, like it was just like things that I was asking. And I realized if you just ask the question, even now, sometimes like in meditation, um, I'll ask. And then sometimes I don't wait to receive the answer. And then I'm like frustrated, you know, like those human emotions come in and it's like, oh, I'm frustrated. Nobody's answering me. <laughs> and right. it's like, no, you're not listening. Right. <laughs> yeah. Like own universe. <laughs> yeah. I'm like, sometimes I'm like, hello universe. You're not listening. Right. <laughs> um, okay. So the other question that I also had to, and I feel like some of our listeners might have would be, when you call yourself a visionary artist, so, mm -hmm. and you said your whole life, you've been an artist. Mm -hmm. Now, do you, is it, how do you paint pictures for people? Is it just, how do you use your, how do you use your gift in that way? Yeah. So, um, my journey as an artist, um, begins like back in elementary school when I was at the Catholic grade school and I like colored this picture and like, super rainbow I don't know and I won this like free book from the book fair so I was lit and I like just always started doing art in like super bright color super intricate details um I can show you some of my art and we can um put it on here but I just have so many little details in my art and I think it's a way of expression for me and just like I get into that flow of just being able to create and I definitely don't get to do it as much as I want to anymore just because of like having a matrix job and like just trying to make it in the world these days but like it is my passion and um I get to travel to different festivals and um show my art and meet new people that are part of my soul family and I have a whole family um of art and creatives that I've like cultivated in the last year and um I don't know I'm just super happy to be where I'm at and I know it's something that I created for myself so yeah that's grateful. awesome I was gonna say well you have us here as your soul family we have a whole tribe of people <laughs> um so when you said so when I, when you had said that, you know, your, so what do you do for you said your matrix job? I think a lot that would resonate with a lot of people. Cause I feel like even when I switched over, took the leap of faith, mm -hmm. there's also a lot of people right now that are starting to kind of collectively, I should say, they're like, you know, that nine to five job, they're trying to figure out how they could kind of take that leap. What does that look like for you? Where do you, where do you, like, what do you do as for your nine to five? Because obviously we all have bills, right? We all can't just, you know. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. So <laughs> I work in healthcare and I feel like it's a, a part of my karma right now because I, <laughs> I work at a clinic that we see like 170 patients a day. And I'm like, just, I'm definitely just in the matrix. It's a different energy, but like I am, it's like a good paying job and I'm like grounded for once. So and I work like three, three twelve. So I'm, um, in the process of developing my photography business. So I have the extra time, and um, it just takes time. Like you can't. Yeah. Thing I've learned is I've tried to like half-ass things, and now that I'm like more grounded, I definitely just am trying to develop something that's gonna grow into that full time and there's so much that goes into the online um entrepreneur business but just really being genuine and like planning has been a um I don't know it's been different for me because I've al I've always just been like go with the flow but now that I'm planning and trying to establish myself um I'm like seeing some results and 
it just takes time. And if there's like any advice I could give anyone, it's just to always be honest with yourself and like know that there is a different life out there apart from like everything we've learned. And it's just, I hate that it takes time and I don't want to trust the process, but the process is like what will get you there. Yeah. I was going to say the the things that I took away was that was probably a message for me because I actually was just right there. So I used to work in healthcare too. And I had took the leap of faith that I was not going back to my nine to five. Um, and when you say that it's hard, I probably should have done, now that I look back on it, I always think to myself, I probably should have done this a little bit different. Like probably shouldn't have just completely, you know, cause I, I was a single mom and I had a daughter. Right. So it's like, right. my mom's like looking at me and she's like, what are you, Lauren, what are you going to do? And I was like, I don't know. I have no idea, but I'm not going back there, you know, cause there was obviously a lot of things that happened in between. Right. It's like that huge, like you know, that I'm sure you had plenty of spiritual awakenings, but that spiritual awakening, it was like, this is not happening anymore kind of thing. And, you know, um, you could tell us a little bit about when yours started, but, um, I'm not sure if, you know, grief or, you know, trauma, I'm sure you had some type of story that kind of helped you, like kind of took you in that way of like, I'm not doing this anymore kind of thing. But for me, it was more of like, um, you kind of, I felt like I was always struggling, but I realized once I did trust that process, just like you said, that it takes time that, and I feel like now collectively, just everything that's happening, there's so much happening collectively, right. With all the energy that is like that message of, it's easy to tell somebody, right. The advice of like, it takes time. And it's just like, you know, it's a little bit deeper than that. Right. But it's like, that's literally all you can say sometimes that if it's just like trust that you're not behind. And I Right. And I had a dear friend tell me the other day that she's like, I said out loud, literally, you know, this is what I talk about. This is what I coach about. This is like, you know, just real life. Then I'm like, I feel like I'm so behind. Like I got to go catch up. And she's like, Lauren, you're not behind. And I was like, that is sometimes I, you know, everybody needs that reminder that we're really not behind. We're just, you know, we're trying to, that's conditioning from, you know, even if you've deconditioned all these years, you know, that you still have that, like, I'm so far behind and social media does not make it easier. Right. (laughs) Right. (laughs) Sometimes I wish I went, I'm like, can I just go back to my nine to five job? Like, can I just go check, like clock in, clock out, you know, entrepreneur. I don't feel like people realize on being an entrepreneur, And even having that nine to five job and having a family and, you know, doing your own personal healing, it's not as easy as everybody tries to make it. So that's why I'm like, you know, I'm trying to be as raw and real and authentic as possible. So people are like, like, I can mess up. I can make a mistake. It's safe to make a mistake. It's safe to just not half the time. I don't even know what I'm doing half the time. So I'm just like, rarely. (laughs) really authentic about that but I feel like being vulnerable like that has got me to where I am today so um yeah that's awesome um all right so the when you when I asked you earlier about your story so is there a time or moment in your life like how did you get to be where you are today I feel like um like some of the listeners I know would probably want to know like what changed in you or you know did you have a lifetime of grief or trauma or limiting beliefs I know you know we all have our different stories but I want to know your story like when did it shift for you or when did you you know kind of want to know I want to know something different like what this life is about like when did that shift for you yeah, absolutely. And I'm so passionate about storytelling and um, hearing um, everyone's journey of growth. So, um, you know, I've always really struggled with body image and like being different than my family. I'm like an artist and they're all like sports people and military. So I've never felt like I fit into that like mold. So I had to like go find my people and go um, on like a lot of scary like journeys and a series of unfortunate events. And in 2020, um, I just stopped caring about myself and about like life. I knew that if I was helping people and distracting myself, like that was good enough. And I 
was trying to do the most for everyone else, but I didn't know myself and I didn't know like what I was here for. I was just going through the motions and um, it was when we were isolated during COVID that I just have had, I just had really negative, dark thoughts and like, it was, it's hard for me to talk about openly, but like, I know that was the pivotal point for me. And I was like, I remember just like sitting in my garage and being like praying to God that I don't even know if I believe in. I was just like, when is this going to change? And literally the next day, like I had an overdose and it was in front of like all of my, um, it was like on a zoom meeting in front of all the people I was going to cosmetology school. So 30 people deep just like saw me have a mental breakdown. And I remember like going into the, hospital knowing like oh like this is how I'm gonna die like I did too much and like this is it basically and I was in the hospital for nine days I only remember two and while it's really hard for me to be vulnerable like I tell my story so people know that they're not alone and I had to go through basically like complete reconstruction of who I am and how I felt it was it was like you landed on a new planet and um, I just knew I had to build and restart from literally nothing. And I think just like taking the time to sit with myself and like get to know, like figure out, ask myself those questions and like just be kinder and gentle to myself. Um, I think that's when I knew I was just like, I can create something that I'm proud of and help other people along the way. And, you know, there's so much darkness in the world, but if you can just find like the smallest bit of light, I just think that um, it really does get better. And I really hate that um, phrase, but like there's this picture of me and my boyfriend at Disney World and it's like the picture on the ride and like I'm I just like look so happy on it and like it really did get better for me and that's why I'm like so passionate about helping other people and just providing like a safe space for them to know that like they matter and so do I so thank you oh thank you so much for being vulnerable and I'm sending you tons of hugs and love right now because sure. some of you guys will watch this we're recording this so some of you will be listening or recording and I have to just say that it takes tremendous courage and bravery to say your story so I'm so happy you're here still <laughs> and I definitely have a very similar story so I definitely wholeheartedly understand exactly everything that you're saying so thank you um uh, thank you so much again for being here. And now is there something, so how can people um, get in contact with you? I know that we'll, we'll make sure that they, and the show notes in the description box that they have all, everything that they get in contact with you, but is there, um, do you have a website? Do you, uh, what do you, what is your social media links? Because I know a lot of people are going to want to get into this <laughs> you have. <laughs> I know I'm, I am. Well, thank you so much. <laughs> I had this like big website scheme, but so I'm just like working on making a form for the new um, winter book club. Mm -hmm. And um, also my inbox is always open to anyone that just wants to scream into the void or like have, <clears throat> excuse me, anyone that needs to just like have someone to talk to. I know that I um, would have really just like needed someone to listen and I'm like proud to be that person for anyone that doesn't have that person and um I can provide a the form link if um anyone's interested it's about it's like a bi-weekly book club so it's over zoom and usually it goes from an hour and a half to two hours and just like a safe space for people to um come and hang out with cool people and just be yourself but yeah thank you so much for um listening today and I'm really grateful we could have our talk oh yes um we're gonna stay in contact so don't worry about that <laughs> <laughs> um all right so I will make sure all the listeners have that link um 
So thanks for joining us on today's episode with the amazing Madison. Hopefully you found some great nuggets. I know I have, and hopefully you enjoyed today's episode. So don't forget to subscribe, leave a review and share with somebody that you feel that will gain value from listening to this. I think the world should hear her story. So stay tuned for more captivating conversations in the future. And I hope that you enjoy the rest of your week. We'll see you next time. Thank you for joining us on another enlightening episode on the Enlightened Misfits podcast. If you resonate with this conversation and found it insightful, don't forget to subscribe, rate, and leave us a review. Your feedback fuels our mission. Remember, your journey to unwavering certainty and purpose is ongoing. Stay connected with us on social media and let's continue this conversation. Let's manifest greatness in our lives. Until next time, this is Lauren from the Enlightened Misfits podcast. Stay enlightened, stay inspired, and keep manifesting your extraordinary path.